debates on public education continue to discuss the inequalities in educational success by our students from schools that are based on funding through property tax, which indicates a social equality that doesn't exist before the school education starts. Today on Roundtable Perspective, Dr. Tin Chun Lin discusses the economics of education and the consequence of quality education and full funding on student success. Welcome to the Roundtable Perspective. I'm your host, Lee Arts. I'm joined today by my guest, Tun Chun Lee, who is an economist at the Indiana University Northwest. And we're here to talk about education and economics. So welcome to the new season of Roundtable Perspective. Dr. Lin, I'm glad you could join us today. Thank you for having me. Um, I've looked at your, um, your scholarly publications. I mean, it's quite wide, quite extensive. You do everything from looking at the relationship between the quality of a teacher and the success of students to a, a 10-year study of education and its relationship to economic growth in Taiwan and even how crossword puzzles help teaching uh, microeconomic vocabulary to students. So it's, it's quite impressive. I thought we might start with um, giving us an overview of what economists do. I mean, everyone hears of this, but beyond telling us what the stock market is, what do economists actually do? Oh, thank you for this question. In, indeed, this question is very broad because economics has many, many different areas. For example, I'm, uh, I'm not a financial economist. I'm an educational economist. Okay. So it depends on what your field is. If, so economists could be applied to any, so they could be a financially yes. and an environmental economist? Yes, a, a lot. A and you're an education yes, economist. Yes, a lot. Okay. Uh, you just mentioned about the stock market. I think that would be the financial economist would focus on. And um, like me, uh, educational economists, I focus on the human capital investment okay. and uh, how we treat education as human capital. It's, it's kind of um, a good and uh, how, we uh, how we train students. Students indeed is, um, um, we train them as the human capital and how they in the future uh, contribute themselves to this economy. So, so e educational economists, we study how the government, how the government collect money, and how the government distribute this money, and. Uh, you, do you mean in the way of uh, public, public dollars yes. for public yes. education? Yes. So, like in Indiana, mm -hmm. funds for yeah. public education have been yes. cut by fifty percent, mm -hmm. and the university mm -hmm. system has lost its funds. So, there's actually mm -hmm. a cutback in support. Yeah. Not, not by the public, but certainly by the government. Is that, and you would study this? Yes, we studied, uh, uh, indeed, indeed, education economics studied, uh, also economics, but focus on the education. Yes. Uh, we focus on the tax, how tax uh, distribute, how we collect tax, and how this tax used for, to finance public schools. Recently, I think several years ago, Monster, Monster uh, District had an $8 million deficit. That's also part of uh, my research area and how this the deficit um, happened and uh, how the public school fund, uh, how the, the government fiscal funding affect the student performance. Mm -hmm. That is kind of a macro area. But for the micro area, we continue to investigate. And uh, as I just said, we treat students as human capital. So we want this human capital, we want to train these students. So we continue to study uh, how students can perform well. Because if students perform well in the future, they can contribute this economy better. So that's why I focus on the students' effort. Uh, normally, we only, normally people only focus on the a monetary investment. 
So monetary investment is, is like the, you pay the tuition, but as you know, uh, students pay, only pay tuition doesn't mean they can uh, get the knowledge. Mm -hmm. So they need to uh, devote their effort. So I not only studied monetary investment, monetary investment including uh, the tax funding, uh, the fiscal funding, and the parents, how well, parents it, invest. It's, it seems like much of that economics is bumping up against questions of politics, mm -hmm. though, because oh, yes. right, yeah. most school systems, mm -hmm. I don't yeah. know if all, you mm -hmm. would probably know, but many school systems use property tax mm -hmm. as the way of funding education. So if you live in a uh, area like Munster versus mm -hmm. an area like Gary, mm -hmm. the property tax is going to provide many more funds mm -hmm. to the public education system. So from the very beginning, from K through 12, mm -hmm. students in a district that has very low funding is not going to have the same resources in a district that has very high funding. Is that correct? It, yes, correct. And because the main source of the public school funding coming from the property tax, sales tax, and also others uh, local taxes. Like so so if there's a difference tax. of uh, property values and mm -hmm. property and the quality mm -hmm. of property in different communities, there's going to be an inequality. You could predict there's an inequality in education. Oh, yeah. yeah, yes, definitely. Because, because our, our uh, funding mainly coming from the property tax. So if the, uh, if the, school, the school, that's why school quality is significantly related to uh, tax funding. Uh, if this, uh, for example, in this local area, Munster, why Munster, Munster School District is better than other areas? Because the Mon Munster uh, property tax is higher than yes. other areas. Yes. So that means uh, uh, public school get more funding. I served on the school board mm -hmm. in New Buffalo, Michigan for a long yeah. time, and our per mm -hmm. capita student uh, revenues mm -hmm. was $26,000 per student, mm -hmm. which is very high, but it's partly because the tax base was largely mm -hmm. uh, second homeowners from Illinois and they didn't have the, uh, the reduction in tax. So yes. we had a large tax and even though the public school mm -hmm. uh, was 50% free and reduced lunch, which meant they were mm -hmm. from economically uh, stressed backgrounds, they had the highest um, SAT and ACT scores in the state of Michigan because there was a direct correlation between mm -hmm. the monies that were available, the size mm -hmm. of the classrooms, the quality of the teachers, mm -hmm. the quality of the technology and experiences in and out of the classroom, and you could almost point a finger to when, they, when the resources went up, the student um, achievements went up. So, oh, yes. yes. Yes, definitely. Yeah, that's why student performance is highly related uh, Well, funding. so my question yeah. would be, if we know this, and you've published on this, mm -hmm. um, why is it that still um, property tax is the primary way to fund schools, even when we know that this will, this will inevitably create an unequal mm -hmm. education um, system in a state or in this nation? Mm -hmm. Well, then I get back to the <laughs> initially you mentioned this, um, this also related to politics. Yes. It's like uh, several years ago, uh, why Mon Monster have a um, high deficit? Indeed, I would, I would predict, um, I did not have the, the data, but I would, would say probably uh, some money has been wasted. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, why money has been wasted? I don't know, I have no answer. But uh, that is the... That well, is even, the, even at that, yeah. some, of the, some of the vocabulary uh -huh. indicates certain uh -huh. uh, presumptions. I mean, to refer to students as human capital almost refers to them as if they're a product that we're uh -huh. going to make better to sell to somebody. Uh -huh. And when you talk about um, waste, some people would argue some things are wasteful uh -huh. depending on, right? Like if you... Yeah. If, 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 if you're going to feed all of your children and uh, mm -hmm. you're giving them extra fruit or something, some mm -hmm. would argue that's wasteful because it's more calories or more protein mm -hmm. than they need. But if you're a loving father or loving family, mm -hmm. you don't consider it wasteful. So even the language that we mm -hmm. use mm -hmm. has a political, I mean, we're communicating a certain political perspective. Uh, so okay. yeah. do, do, do you, as an economist, even though you're an education economist, do you feel the the heat or the criticism that economy or economists in general have uh, kind of been uh, castigated or ridiculed for not being able to predict the 
2008 recession and the and the recovery. I, I read a thing recently from a Wharton College, the, okay. the a professor of business there, that said the economists were locked into preconceived models and models that were just um, unworkable to okay. think that home prices would continue to rise okay. inevitably forever and ever okay. was the basis of that. So I, I wonder if you feel the same kind of critique when you're, even though you're not dealing with the, yeah. the GDP and yeah. the rest, do you feel the same kind of uh, resistance yeah. from the public? Oh, you're an economist. What the heck do you know? You know, it's magic beads and stuff. So Yeah, that's true. And uh, to be honest, I am not very familiar with the issue, the 2008. But uh, I think why sometimes economists uh, fail to predict those uh, uh, crises. Probably, I think we focus too much on the mathematical models. Uh, yeah. And uh, any uh, financial crisis, um, now, as we know, we are human beings. So there are many variables. It's not just a number. So it must have some other issue happen. Yeah, um, but uh, in 2008, if I remember correctly, indeed, our um, home, uh, house rises, uh, housing rises goes, went down. Yeah, it collapsed. Went, it yeah, collapsed. it went down yeah. a lot. And uh, so it, it happens uh, to the, those mortgage and also banks. Banks has a big uh, problem. Uh, because you loan out a lot of money, but you couldn't get it back. Yeah. I, I, I cannot uh, further discuss this <laughs> issue because it's, I'm not familiar with this yeah, issue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, it does raise an interesting thing, though, because you talk about the different variables in mm -hmm. mathematical models, and mm -hmm. I, don't, I assume that in education, economics, there's also mm -hmm. models and, mm -hmm. and variables as mm -hmm. well. But it would seem like, as a general statement, one could argue, either in social science or in hard science, mm -hmm. if you choose your variables, you're going to have a different outcome than if you choose other variables. Mm -hmm. So the variables, and if you miss a variable, mm -hmm. the outcome is not going to be very oh, yeah. uh, defensible. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, it, meaning, meaning, um, any any issue happen must have several variables influence this issue. So. When economists we doing the research, we all assume assume these variables may affect yeah. this issue. So we look for this data, but it is possible we ignore some variables. So how do you again explaining this to the public or somebody that's not mm -hmm. an economist? I mean, uh, maybe we can bring it back to education. But when I think mm -hmm. about the gross domestic product, the GDP, and mm -hmm. and they they talk about the increase in wealth. And, I mean, I often think if Bill Gates sat down here with us, mm -hmm. if he was sitting here, then the three of us would be millionaires mm -hmm. on average. Uh, but okay. that, <laughs> yes, I mean, statistically, yeah. we would be millionaires on mm -hmm. average. But that is not a reflection of the world in which we live. So sometimes mm -hmm. the statistics, which may be accurate, mm -hmm. statistically accurate, mm -hmm. disguise what is the reality. And I just wonder to what extent that is possible when you're looking at education and the and the and the cost of housing or the or the the birth rate mm -hmm. or I don't know what other variables there might be mm -hmm. that by by selecting certain variables you make predictions that aren't necessarily going to be what happens in this community. Oh, it, it, when when I did the research about the uh, because the our purpose is to uh, improve student performance because students have better performance and can contribute better for this economy. So when we look for the variables to affect the student performance, first we must um, uh, think about the family income because high family income, household income, mm -hmm. it can affect the student achievement and um, also the, the school quality. School quality can be uh, influenced by uh, several variables like uh, class uh, size, tax funding, class yeah. size, and uh, also the uh, teacher quality, yeah. teacher quality, and the teacher salary. A teacher salary and the teacher quality indeed are also related. Yeah. You you want to have a high quality teacher, you got to pay more. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you cannot uh, keep them here. So, t um, teacher quality, school funding, 
school funding com coming from the tax funding. Um, there's um, also some variables. The, 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 the school district, the neighborhood, neighborhood could have an externality uh, effect. And uh, also some others. Even when I did that research, I also include uh, um, um, some race. Race, it could, uh, um, because race, uh, it, it, it has been found related to student performance. Yes. Yeah. Well, in part because mm -hmm. it may be outside of Munster, mm -hmm. if, a, if in a highly segregated school mm -hmm. district, there's going to be less funds, yeah. uh, less funds for mm -hmm. teachers, which mm -hmm. means less qualified mm -hmm. teachers, mm -hmm. fewer resources, mm -hmm. probably larger class mm -hmm. sizes, probably mm -hmm. other social mm -hmm. problems mm -hmm. outside the classroom, mm -hmm. all of which is almost guaranteeing there will be a, a, a hit on uh, mm -hmm student ability to mm -hmm. succeed. Uh, if we go in the other direction though, mm -hmm. say you even have a school like Munster and, mm -hmm. and students are being encouraged to take uh, um, STEM classes mm -hmm. and encouraged to go into uh, mm -hmm. uh, middle income uh, professions. Um, if we're looking at the current um, state of the world, I would argue, um, again, it's only partly related to the recession, but I, I read recently that 88% mm -hmm. of the 7 million jobs that were lost in the last five years mm -hmm. were not due to offshore, or, mm -hmm. but they were due to technology and digital production. Mm -hmm. So we train students that may get a great grade on their mm -hmm. final exam or do well on the SATs, but if they go into a profession like even the legal profession or the medical profession, mm -hmm. they can be replaced by robots, uh, software, and others. So when you, when you look at uh, the success of education, mm -hmm. how does that relate to the world that students are being prepared for? Is that too big of a question? I mean, it's like, okay, we're training students mm -hmm. with these skills, mm -hmm but they're gonna go into an environment four years or eight years from now mm -hmm. where those skills will not be needed because there's algorithms, there's digital, there's, mm -hmm. there's robots that have replaced their... I appreciate you ask this issue because the, I have thought about this issue and I have asked students about this issue. Um, our technology keep improving, which is good. But um, like you mentioned, the robot, robot can replace, replace the human beings. Right. And once we are replaced, and that means the firms, they want to uh, decrease their cost. They want to reduce their cost that they probably high, uh, reduce high workers and uh, using robots. And uh, that can reduce co cost. So if they do that, then we lose jobs. Yes. Yeah, we lose jobs. So in the long run, not mm -hmm. only do you lose jobs, mm -hmm. but you lose the, the people that had the jobs also mm -hmm. lose income. So mm -hmm. they're less able to buy mm -hmm. the products that the robots are producing. The robots may be able to turn it yes. out, yeah. but if people don't mm -hmm. have the income because mm -hmm. there isn't any revenue mm -hmm. coming, they can't mm -hmm. buy it. So it's kind of a, yeah. it's almost a, a, a condemned before you get there. Mm -hmm. that, that's true. And even we discuss, I, we discussed before when, um, with my other colleagues. You know, recently uh, we have a lot of, over a lot of online classes. Yes. And online classes, you even don't need to go to classroom to teach. So, and some uh, colleagues make a joke, say that now we don't need any PhDs. Yeah. And because the, even an instructor, or even you just have a bachelor degree, a master degree, you can do it. You just, you just need to know how to set up those uh, you could have a class in microeconomics where there yeah. was a voice reading from a textbook. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, oh, yes, that's true. So, yeah. so you like were aunt calling on the yeah. phone and they say, "Yes, yeah, so what would you like to know in microeconomics yes. 101?" Yes. And uh, you even don't need to write exams <laughs> because the test bank and yeah. you just easily you just put those technology and the students randomly choose the, 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 the exam. So we have been thinking: so, so do we need a PhD? And if we don't have PhD, we even can save money. Yeah. And uh, you even don't need a, a, a campus because you can stay at home to do this online class. 
class. At a certain point, you don't need people. Think yeah, of, you, all, the, you don't think need of all the money you would save because you wouldn't yeah. have to feed them. Just yeah. you know, they could just starve to death, and there's no reason That's to have health care or and, uh, emergency vehicles. Yeah. Think of all the money, how efficient it would yes. be. Yes, <laughs> and you, you, and economists could tell us that. Yes. Show us the cost That's savings. That's true. Yeah. And you even don't need to worry about the the, the classroom limit seats because the te online class can be one student, can be 100 yeah. students. So then. It can save a lot of money, but like what you say, then we don't even need people. Yeah. We just need a few people yeah. can do these online classes. And then if we do this way, then how many people would lose jobs? And lose job, one person lose job is not just one person, it's a family. Yeah. A family lose jobs. So that means at the same time, those technology may substitute our job opportunities. So that's, that, this is the issue, and the government needs to carefully consider. So, and then those to, to what mm -hmm. extent do economists, education mm -hmm. economists, bump mm -hmm. up against these mm -hmm. realities mm -hmm. and kind of set back and look at it from a more than an economics perspective? Because mm -hmm. economically, you say, we save all this money, but mm -hmm. when you think about it socially or mm -hmm. humanely, mm -hmm. it's like, that's not all there mm -hmm. is to life, that's not all there is to the world. I mean, I've, mm -hmm. I'm in favor of having mm -hmm. robots, but I figure robots should, mm -hmm. uh, whatever benefit they bring to, to us, it should be brought to all of us, not to a handful, and then everybody mm -hmm. else is kind of uh, cast aside. So do, do the economists, I mean, are there are venues where the economists are grappling with their, uh, mm -hmm. what, their ethic or their moral uh, responsibilities as economists? Yes. Uh, we, we, like what we just discussed, the robots, but um, robots cannot replace everything, and because we still need some human beings. Well, you need maintenance yeah. to repair the robots, yeah. but <laughs> it's like, it's like a, a, online classes, and I told online classes, but I found the students, I have several students told me they said they preferred tra traditional face to face, because the uh, online class is a uh, is a technology. It's a high technology, but uh, you just feel there's no interaction. So f taking this example, we can feel like, uh, um, yes, our technology keep improving and uh, replace a lot of our job opportunities. So this is the main issue the, and uh, is a serious issue the government need to consider. And uh, do we need to um, encourage firms use all robots, use all I, those high technology and uh, and uh, make our employment rate high. Um, the, my question would be: the last one is on the book. The book that you, the the long ten year study that you did in Taiwan mm -hmm. about the relationship between higher education and economic growth. Mm -hmm. Do the models you use there, the variables apply? Would they apply to any mm -hmm. society, any country, or would you have to look at different variables? Depending on the time and the historic moment, and the, the model I use can be applied to any country, any country because the that consider the three important uh, variables: the labor, capital, and uh, in the old model did not consider human capital, but now we all consider human capital. But the key issue is how to measure human capital. Physical capital is easy to measure; yeah. just the, the number of amount you invest right. uh, in this industry. Well, you can measure labor productivity, that's yeah. fairly easy, Le labor. but you don't necessarily measure what is the consequence for yes. yeah. the, the, the human, human part capital. Of that. Yeah, yeah that, that's, the, that's the key point. Um, like we said, the labor is easy to measure, yeah, the, the number of workers, and the physical capital is the, the number of the amount you invest. But the human capital is difficult to measure. And there's several different measures for human capital. Uh, what I use is the average years of the workers in his whole life uh, complete. Because the, the you different different years, um, that means the, the longer years years you spent on education, that means your human human capital yeah. is is, yeah. is bigger. Yeah. So, but the, some people they also uh, use different measures. Mm -hmm. I think our time is about up. Okay. So, uh, Dr. Uh, Tin Jun Lin, yeah. I appreciate you coming. Maybe oh. we'll have you back again to talk some more about the uh, politics and philosophy of education 
oh, economics. Okay. Yeah. Uh, thank <laughs> thank you. you for coming. Uh, uh, thank that's you for that's all me. the time we have now um, on Roundtable Perspective. I'm Lee Arts. Thank you for joining me, and we will see you next time.